since I had a little bit too much uh, five hour Red Bull, uh, I'm gonna be taking over here. So one big thing that's actually having in the industry is the inflatable kayaks are coming really strong, especially if you're trying to go through shallow water. It has an extremely, really low draft. So instead of just thinking about getting, you know, a big hefty kayak like a Jackson or a Hobie, try to look at the inflatable kayaks that are actually on the market right now, because that's really coming into its own. If you're fishing the Rappahannock, the Susquehanna, Upper Potomac, things of that ilk, these things right here can come to play. Oh, so I love how we had this conversation <laughs> yesterday and I've evangelized you to, you know, inflatables. So you're, you're hitting all this the, guy here, this is, yep, stuff. this is Jeff Little, guys. Rumor has paddle across the Atlantic Ocean with one bottle of water and make it onto the other side. No, so, <laughs> so um, now that I have Jeff here, um, is there anything you want to walk through about this? We are live streaming, by the way. Sure. Um, you know, this, this boat is the innovative sportsman Osprey 1436. It really was designed around the motor, the, the Torquedo Ultralight 1103. Um, the, the advantages of inflatables in general, like what I just said, shallow draft, I need about two and a quarter inches to get through, which is great for the snakehead fishing, the, the Susquehanna smallmouth fishing right now with the river at, at a fairly low, you know, low level. Um, that shallow draft is so critical, but also the stealth. Uh, when you drop, you know, when you drop a pair of pliers in a hard boat as opposed to a soft boat, it transmits that vibration out into, into their environment and it spooks fish. Um, the same thing with the hull slap, the water hitting the side of, of a hard boat, you're just going to get closer to to fish and I see more fish when I'm in an inflatable because that that whole slap the, the you know the the water slapping at the hull is just quieter and they're they just let you get closer which is awesome and if I'm not mistaken this is this one's seen some wars because I can see like the scuffs and stuff this is you actually use one of these things too correct I have mine uh I actually had mine in the the in water um that was the one we had you know folks out there for you know to demo uh, on Tuesday, but I've been using one for a couple months now. Uh, but I've been using other inflatables. I use the the one that NRS distributes, the, the Star Rival Fish, which is going to become the NRS Fishing Cuda is another great model. Sea Eagle makes great inflatables. Uh, Hobie has their I-11 or, or I-Trek. They keep changing it. But inflatables in general, shallow draft and, and stealth and stability. To be able to stand on this, you know, the thing I say is, you ever you ever tried to to drown a beach ball? Like, just push it. You're at the that pool is, and you try to get it down. Yeah. It doesn't want to go, and that's the physics that's at play with the inflatable. When you stand up, it's not like on a rotor molded boat where you're like, I'm gonna get my balance. No, you stand up, and you're like, mm. it's there. It doesn't it doesn't do the wobble, which sends the wake out that spooks the fish. One thing I was really worried about by looking at these is like like them getting popped or something like that, or them getting damaged. Like how durable are these things compared to things like 10, 15 years ago? So they're not pool toys. I know my experience with, um, with inflatables started with the, um, with a cataract. You know, I, I camped out of, um, I had two 16 foot pontoons with the outdoor Creek company, you know, um, growing frame on there, a pair of soil oars. And, uh, and those were super durable. I took them through really shallow stuff. I've run over, and even with with this one, I've run over rebar on the on the Shenandoah at speed, and it's fine. Wow. Um, are they indestructible? No, no, they're not. But people think, oh, as soon as you get a hook near that, it's gonna it's gonna go. No, the hooks don't do it. I bounced. You know, I actually gave my buddy Jake Harshman a brand new um, crankbait, and I said, I'm gonna tie this on. New out of the package, I wanted for you to beat the snot out of it and, and get the snot of this as much as you can. Once his arm got tired, I was like, okay, now I'm going to give you a pair of pliers. And he's like, you set me up. I'm like, yeah, I know I did. And I filmed it for my YouTube channel, The Little Stuff. There's a whole playlist um, on The Little Stuff YouTube channel on inflatables. And that's one of the videos. Eventually, I give him a pair of pliers and I say, take the hook and, and jam it into it. And, and yeah, that did a puncture. And I said, time me on, on repairing this. And I used Tear-Aid Type B. Hmm. And I put a little patch over it. 
and it didn't even lose enough that I needed to, you know, to actually add more air to it because I carry a pump with me. And it's not. Ah, uh, okay. It's not this one. And it's, a, uh, it's actually a, it's a K-Pump Mini. I don't carry this one with me. I carry the other one. But these outer ones go to, to three pounds per square inch. And the inner one goes to 12 pounds per square inch, which gives it its its amazing rigidity. And that rigidity gives it its speed that you need. So, Guys, that's really cool. And especially, you know, with fishing and deviations for the greater, you know, D.C. metropolitan area. We've got the Susquehanna River. We've got the Rappahannock. We've got the Upper Potomac, Shenandoah, James, New, go on and on and on. We have a ton of shallow rivers. And, I mean, this guy's really just opened my eyes to the feasibility, practicality of having one of these inflatable kayaks, especially for that kind of water there. Um, I mean, no, I think the, this is amazing. And then you know, Jake's Bait and Tackle, located which is in Virginia, they're going to start carrying these things too. That's on the to-do list as well. Uh, also, please give uh, the little, uh, I think you said the little stuff? Is little right? stuff, YouTube little channel. Stuff. He is awesome. He has tons of great content. Please like and subscribe to his content when you have a chance. Yeah, um, I know I, I worked with Trey in, in designing this, and some of the things that I have seen puncture the the sides of this. I mean, I've had I've had even the, the star rival fish all over the, the Shenandoah um, and, and other places. And at speed running over, yes, the razor sharp ledges of the Shenandoah, no problem. Um, fish fins puncture it, believe it or really? not. So I want you to look at, there's, there's a couple places where this has double thickness. One is the underside, there's a second layer all the way. And these are actually designed so you can grab this like this and drag it. That's actually ingenious. If we go to the front of it, let's go all the way. That's, that's really ingenious. This is double layer. Well here, right? But then there's a, there's a section right here that you can really see it. Where does it? Right in here, this seam you right see here. It? Yeah. All right. The seam starts there and there. Okay. Why? Because this is where you land your fish. Ah, uh, okay. So okay. They bounce the smallmouth hit it and bounce off. I mean, tell me, smallmouth anglers, how often do you bleed? Seriously, from fish fin punctures. That's that's the kind of puncture. It's a really easy repair. You get some um, some aqua seal. You deflate it, put some aqua seal on it, and just smush it over there. Let it sit for 24 hours, and it's good. When you're out there on the water and and you need to seal up that puncture, honestly, you're not going to lose that air enough that you're going to feel it before the end of the trip. Um, you can use the Terry Type B to get you through. Just like if you mountain bike and you go out on single track and you run over a thorn bush and you have those punctures, what do you have? You got a, a little pump strap to the, the frame and you have a little repair kit or a spare inner tube. Um, it's the same kind of thing. It doesn't happen that often, but you need to, to be ready to repair while you're out there. And, and the YouTube channel, the, the inflatable kayaks playlist, really, really dives into, you know, that knowledge and, and telling folks how, you know, you can get a repair kit ready and how you use it on the water. The worst blowout I had, though, the most catastrophic blowout I had, I was up at Mike Iaconelli's little lake behind his house. We had just finished filming the installation of a Torquedo Ultralight 1103 on his Hobie Pro Angler 12. Um, which you can watch that video. It's on the Torquedo playlist. But I was out filming him afterwards, and he, he makes a cast with something but has a backlash, and the braid goes, like, behind him and catches on, like, a glide bait hook back here. And I and I drift into him, like, let me help you with that. And he's like, I'll get it. And, and his elbow hits the throttle and knocks it back. And, oh, the, and the, the prop kicks up, and it slices two gashes right in the side. Oh, man. <laughs> And I lose this outer chamber. You guys got to see it a second ago when I deflated this. You lose one chamber, you still have two of them to keep you afloat, okay. right? Okay, I lost awesome. all the pressure in one of them. And, and Mike was very apologetic and was like, did I do that? And I'm like, it's cool. It gives me an opportunity to, to, to learn how to do the repair on the field. You hey, guys going in there. Come here. Here's a <laughs> So, we 
we did that install or did that repair in the field and it took me 20 minutes to put the Terry type B on there, pump it back up with the K pump mini and then, you know, get it, get it back to operational and finish the, the video I did with Mike. So, you know, it's a new type of, of platform to work with, with new skill set for, for being able to, you know, to unlock the stealth the shallow draft and crazy stability. It's all worth it if you if you just set up the repair kit and, and carry a pump with you. And then guys, all of this, I'm gonna link it in the episode description down below as well. I know we're live streaming right now, but when I re-upload it, all of his stuff will be there in case you want a quick search for it. But it's the little stuff, his YouTube channel, a lot of great content there. One more question that I know they're probably saying there, what size Torquedo do you recommend putting on something like this? You know, I've switched over to the 1103 for almost all my fishing. Um, the 403 is a great motor, but the 1103 is the more evolved one. I get to 6.7, 6.8 mile per hour with this boat and uh, crazy range and and range where you can go shallower than than any rotomole boat. Awesome, guys. That's fantastic. Like you were saying, Virginia, Virginia, uh, you see her catching snakehead in the Pacific River. Uh, fish a woman here. And thank you to Big Big Tackle for coming through with my mag drafts and right. Academy <laughs> order up for a month. Free deliveries. Wrong color every time. Jennifer hooked her up and uh, shipped it out. I made a call to Jared and I said, Jared, do you have these? Is he fishing the kayak uh, no. association? No, we got this one. I wanted to know why. Stuff. Yes. Uh, I did want to point out too that one of the features on this one back here on the Chano River yep. is on this Torquedo. Um, this right here on this, these right here. I mean, that's something that for the river. So this is the rock guard from Innovative Sportsman. Um, we actually have a local guy out of Boyce, okay. Virginia. It's um, it's Ashby Gap. Yeah, Outfitter Jeff Kelby. Adventures. Jeff Kelby. Jeff Kelby. Yeah. He, yeah. Runs, yeah. he runs. He runs. Not one of these, but the travel motor on his raft. He's actually a torpedo dealer. Um, but yeah, I mean, he runs it on his eco tourism awesome. raft, and uh, he's running one of these these rock guards, and it's got the grass cutter, and that's you know made by innovative sportsmen in Mount Airy, Maryland. That's awesome. So Jeff was on our podcast, Kelby, and as we said, Jeff Little is also going to be on the podcast in I believe August. Question there, can you stand up and fly fish in? Absolutely. Watching the replay, uh, Jeff just talked about that. I mean, I'm really, I was really skeptical about these. Not skeptical is the wrong word. I was hesitant. You know, I really didn't understand them. But, you know, after talking to Jeff, like there is a huge prac. This thing would play on the shallow rivers, especially up where we live, you know, with Susquehanna and everything. But again, guys, please, uh, please give him a like and subscribe on his channel. Uh, check out all the nice products here that we've been talking about today and we'll, and we'll see you later uh we're just gonna keep the live stream going and just keep walking around we're gonna turn the mics off real quick cheers